Now it's time to go over my value starts of the week for week five. Let's start here with the quarterback position and Jordan Love going against that Raiders defense that ranks 29th against opposing quarterbacks. Jordan Love has really seen his share of growing pains, but you are starting to see what the development behind Aaron Rodgers is really starting to look like. He looks poised in the pocket and just makes really good reads at, at different points of the game. You know, he gets the Raiders defense this week who has, you know, they've had their troubles as of late. Now that Christian Watson is back in the mix, Love has some weapons at his disposal that are good enough to make plays for him. I can see a solid fantasy outing for Love this week. Going on to the next quarterback here, we're talking about Joe Burrow going against the Cardinals defense that ranks 25th against opposing quarterbacks. And I know what you guys are thinking, Joe Burrow and the value. Yeah, he has been that bad this season to where I have to put him in my value starts for this week. It is crazy to even think about. But then again, we're based on all these numbers and what we're seeing and Joe Burrow just at the bottom of the barrel. Joe Burrow and the Bengals are now one in three, and this offense has looked like absolute, just a puke show thus far this season. At the end of the day, we have to remember what Joe Burrow is. He's an uber talented type of player. You know, he's got uber talented type of players around him. The pedigree of Burrow will eventually shine through. This week against the Cardinals could be just what the doctor ordered. It's unclear as of the recording of this video whether or not T. Higgins will be on the field with that rib injury, but even if he's not, Joe Burrow will still just turn it around eventually and it could be this week. I can easily see the Cardinals defense giving Burrow his confidence back. The last quarterback we're going over today is Daniel Jones, taking on that Dolphins defense that ranks 28th against opposing quarterbacks. Daniel Jones is going to need a rejuvenation story after his two interception performance last week against the Seahawks. The Giants put too much money into this guy for him just to flop. You never know what you're really going to get with Daniel Jones, though. One day he's putting up 350 yards and three touchdowns. The next he throws two interceptions against the Dolphins defense where he's going to need to be clicking on all cylinders and throw the ball all over the field to even have a chance to keep up with this high powered Miami Dolphins offense. I can see Adam Jones actually just having a nice fantasy outing. If your quarterback is on bye week, just give Daniel Jones a chance and he may surprise you. Let's shoot on over here to the running back position. Talk about David Montgomery going on that Panthers defense that ranks 29th against opposing running backs. Montgomery has absolutely taken charge of this backfield. Last week, we saw Montgomery with 32 attempts to Jameer Gibbs' eight attempts. As long as Montgomery can stay healthy, he will be the bell cow for this team and keep the highly touted rookie at bay. This Panthers defense has been gashed week after week, and with the way that the Montgomery has been running, it looks like it's going to be a very long day for this Panthers defense. Look for Montgomery to eat the Panthers for breakfast this week. Next running back we're talking about here is Devin A. Chain. Now, we're going to get that Giants defense ranking 25th against opposing running backs. As much as I hate to admit it, I was wrong about Devon A. Chain. Uh, this guy is an absolutely just electric. He's shifty. He can make great cuts, and he shows the vision to be able to pop off those big runs. Two weeks in a row, A-Chain has made defenses just look complete, just silly. You know, I won't be counting A-Chain out again, uh, you know, against this, this Giants defense that he's going up against. It almost feels like A-Chain is slowly trying to take over uh, Raheem Mostert's number one running back spot. You know, don't get left out with A-Chain sitting on your bench. You really just need to start this guy in all formats. He is just flat out fun to watch. Watch. Last running back I'm going to talk about is Jaleel McLaughlin for the Denver Broncos taking on the Jets defense that ranks 20, uh, 22nd against opposing running backs. You know, people may not know this kid, but let me just take a second. I'm going to introduce you to this stud. So McLaughlin holds the NCAA all-time record with 8,166 yards. He was an undrafted free agent out of the Youngstown State. You know, McLaughlin excelled as a player at Notre Dame before he ended up transferring to Youngstown State as a junior. This kid is absolutely special. In the preseason, McLaughlin was repeatedly catching people's eye with his running ability. Now with Javante Williams battling a hip injury, we finally saw what he can do in meaningful action. He ran seven times for 72 yards while catching three passes for 32 yards and a touchdown. Now, while there are reports out there saying that Javante isn't expected to miss any time, head coach Sean Payton says that he wants to reevaluate McLaughlin's role in this offense after he gave the team some quote-unquote juice and receiving the game ball last week. I see McLaughlin easily with 10 to 12 carries if Javante plays and possibly 15 to 18 carries if Javante sits. Either way, I see him passing just Samaj P. Ryan on the depth chart. Let's just face it, the Broncos stink. 
and they need to see what they have in this rookie. I can see some success this week against the Jets. Moving right along to the wide receivers, we're going to talk about Rasheed Rice going on against the Vikings defense that ranks 31st against opposing wide receivers. The rookie Rice is clearly becoming one of Patrick Mahomes' favorite targets out, out of the wide receiver room. You know, he's definitely behind Kelsey in the target share, but clearly above the rest. This is surprising to me because of the drop issue he had in the preseason. I thought for sure MVS and Sky Moore would be having more of an opportunity to shine than Rice, but even with all that said, Rice is just the receiver that I want from this group. You know, going against a terrible secondary and having Mahomes as your quarterback gets Rasheed Rice on my start list this week. The next wide receiver we're talking about here that could be a good value, we're talking about Nick Westbrook Ekine. Or e I'm going to say Ekine. That's what I think his name is. He's going against that Colts defense that's uh, ranked 25th against opposing wide receivers. Now, while I don't like this offense, I do like the opportunity. Westbrook Ekine has the same number of targets as Hopkins last week, so if you're in need of a dart throw, there's just a good chance that he's on your waiver wire. If you are in need of a good spot start just due to bye weeks or an injury, then you could do far worse than Westbrook. Westbrook Ekine, just pick him up if you need him. The last wide receiver I'm going to talk about today is Romeo Dubes taking on that Raiders defense that ranks 22nd against opposing uh, wide receivers. Now, Dubes is a wide receiver I have been kind of up and down on all season long. You know, the target share that he's shown last week with both Watson and Reed in the lineup tells me that this is a wide receiver that I want this week against the beatable Raiders secondary. If Love continues to improve as a passer, Dubes is easily a wide receiver too this week. Just get him in your lineup. Moving right along to the tight end position first guy we're talking about here is zach ertz taking on that Bengals defense that ranks 30th amongst opposing tight ends ertz has reached an absurd number of targets this season he's currently second in targets at the tight end position only behind tj hawkinson even though the cardinals are a bad offense the target opportunities are just too good to pass up especially against a Bengals defense who can't cover the tight end position to save their life zach ertz is an every week starter at the pace he is going Next tight end we're talking about here is Hayden Hurst, taking on that Lions defense that ranks 27th among opposing tight ends. The tight end position as a whole is a crapshoot every single week, so it's important to try to play your matchups. It just so happens that Hayden Hurst is having a great matchup this week against the Lions. Hurst is actually just usually a touchdown or bust type of player, and has an opportunity to do so that we are this week. I see Bryce Young under center uh, here, whereas much more likely to target that tight end position than Andy Dalton was. I think Hurst is a solid play this week against the Lions. Last tight end I'm talking about here is Tyler Higbee taking on that Eagles defense that ranks 31st against opposing tight ends. Higby has been a huge part of this offense. Last week, he got most of the targets out of any tight end or wide receiver. Against an Eagles team where the Rams will need to score as many points as possible, I can see a nice workload for Higby. I understand that Cup could be back this week, and even with that as a factor, I still see Higby as a great play. I wouldn't bet an eye if I saw Higby as a top five tight end for week five. Get him in your lineup. Now on to the Bengal Tiger, start of the week. The Bengal Tiger start of the week is running back Brees Hall. Hall is going against a Broncos defense ranked dead last against opposing running backs. The Broncos defense has been a fantasy goldmine for players so uh, thus far this season. You know, Brees Hall may be sharing the workload with Dalvin Cook, but I can easily see the Jets beating the Broncos, which puts them in a positive game script, which in turn means Brees Hall will see that rock. It was known also this week that there is no longer a snap share on there for Brees Hall, so they really could let the reins loose for this guy, and he really could see him pull away as far as touches go compared to Dalvin Cook. If Hall is able to get up towards that 15 to 20 carry mark, I can easily see 100 plus yards rushing for this guy, which easily puts him as a Bengal Tiger start of the week.